Hey guys, Jesse here and welcome back to my Young Justice reaction series. Today we're moving on to season three, episode three. And on the last episode, we had the beginning of our infiltration mission. We had attempted regicide and the finding of a not so dead, dead girl. Yep, everyone's kind of in a sticky situation now. Black Lightning was knocked unconscious and then thrown in some water for a while. Artemis has been on her own little secret side mission. Connor and the prince are captured by the bad guys, the prince being turned into some sort of weird metagene enhanced monstrosity probably. And it seems like Dick is about to try to solo this entire compound. But the episode left off on a cliffhanger where the prince is now becoming a metahuman in some shape or form. So I'm interested to see what is going to happen there. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the episode. <laughs> GW? Okay. Race for light speed, people. I'm your very own star girl, Courtney Whitmore. We're hanging out with the most transformative young actor in Hollywood. The star of the hit sci-fi series, Space Trek 3016. <laughs> That's Christ. right, it's Lieutenant Torque himself, Garfield Logan. My friends call me Gar. <laughs> well, just be What does Gar? I'm dying. This, what does this have to do with anything? Friend you've been seen with, Queen Perdita of Vladiva? <laughs> what can I say? She's my queen, and I'm her fool in love. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh Tell my god. How you two love Shit, we got rid um, well, it's, it's not of Kid Flash. Story. And then we got this. Met at a funeral for a fast friend of ours. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. As one of the very few openly meta civilians in the world, I want to raise awareness <coughs> about meta human trafficking. I... Kids our age are being targeted and kidnapped <coughs> into an underground market for meta experimentation. Why does this feel so, so cringe to me? I don't. We all have to rise up and fight back. Remember, if you see something, scream something. Don't do this, please! Why have like two thirds of these episodes started with a PSA from Beast Boy? Also, why is Beast Boy dating uh, that one duchess? I can't remember her name. Oh, I just realized she was at Wally's funeral because he saved her life. Oh. We are climbing up into that ominous dark hole in the cliff to rescue our super friend. You are going to stay right here with our super cycle. Understand? I don't think you would really understand that even if you hadn't come back from the dead. Let's move. You know? Kill. Oh, Jesus Christ, lady. That's not a good sign. Uh, the good old, as long as you're wearing a lab coat or like a bright orange vest, you can get it anywhere. Always. So careful. We're shutting this place down. Prepare the shipment. Mm -hmm. Let's go. What horrible Resident video. Evil monster right, is the prince going to be turning in too soon? Negative. Those pods aren't going anywhere fast on rails. I need to locate SB and the prince first. Put eyes on X and... Oh. oh. Dr. Helga Jace. They've got SB. Unconscious. He seems surprisingly oh, he normal. Not going to like that. Something's happening. Explain yourselves. Count Vertigo. We... I have just spoken with... His Highness, and he gave no orders for the podding and tarring of a prince of the realm. His Highness, Gregor. I want answers now. You so the brothers pissed to. that his brother was. was done by the boss's command. I had to. His so-called Highness is out of control. The things so, he has made us do. So doing more is going to be better. Stop him to stop Bedlam. You ignorant peasant. Why did I think he was gonna call her a bitch? <laughs> you ignorant bitch. Nightwing, new arrival. Well, if 
if it isn't Baron Bedlam himself. Come, Knight. I only require this organization to operate without me for one night. Okay, maybe I was wrong. I thought he was a red herring. Very helpful. No kill. So glad you didn't listen. Uh, Halo girl. Hmm. Well, good on Halo. <laughs> Guys, we need an exit and backup. We'll secure the shipment. Make sure she doesn't go anywhere. Happily, sir. I feel like she is small beans at this point. Oh. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm here to rescue. Out of my way. Brion. Brion. <laughs> oh, what does that even taste like? So this Prince dude definitely has some abilities now, wait, right wait. though? Working on it. No kill! Nightwing! I'm working on it! He's a little busy right now. Like, he's good at his job. He's not a miracle worker. Okay, the ball shit is real annoying. Kids. The kids in the pods, they boom tubed him away. We've lost him. It has come to my attention that Prince Brion Markov is a metahuman working with other metahumans to destabilize Markovia's national security. That is preposterous. I have evidence to prove it. What kind of annoying bullshit is that? <laughs> you get away from me. Brion, please, no, call no. me. Ah. Oh, fire powers? Who are you people? Oh. What? what is happening? Oh, and he's gone. Brion. <laughs> I don't know if that was supposed to be funny. I mean, that would probably be pretty freaky. Guys! This footage shows Prince Brion undergoing an illegal metagene activation. And given their stance against meta trafficking, Brion is most likely responsible for the assassinations of well, that's his own annoying. Parents, King Victor and Queen Eloise! <laughs> <laughs> Following him with infrared. Look. He's headed for the palace. I'll try to cut him off. Is that really graceful of an exit? Oh, don't fuck off. We got other things to deal with. Sending your heavy hitter away? Not very good at this game, are you? I see you're down one super boy. I'll raise you. One, two, three, four. Five evil butlers. Pop, pop, pop. We're outnumbered. Then let's level the playing field. Uh. Oh shit. He looks cool. This looks bad for you though, dude. Okay, if you ain't metahuman, you're something. Doesn't that also look suspicious for him? better way to handle this, and we can help you find it. And so our worst fears are confirmed. Prince Brion Markov, in league with metahuman assassins. But you're yeah. metahuman as well. I had to become one, to defend us against them. Liar, guess why I did it? To defend my country from you. Brion, no. God, it's funny watching Superboy try to hold someone back from a fight. But remember, I'm not only the meta-trafficking doctor, I'm also a client. You're also a little bitch. Like, I understand, like, if you actually had, like, some skill, like, if separating yourself would be useful. But if you're just, like, a skinny British nerd and you separate, now you're just five skinny British nerds. Enough of this. Oh, 
Oh my god. What the fuck? Sorry. That went from funny to horrifying so quickly. Cool, maybe don't kill that one because that's also a child, probably. You wanna kill something? Try me! I have a feeling she ain't dead though. Oh god. Okay. What is her power set? Girl, get off the phone. There's two giant lava rock monsters fighting each other. Now that I have proven the what you've proven here is your hypocrisy. You've been scapegoating metahumans, though you yourself were a metahuman. Clearly, you've done business. I still with the don't trust you. My parents were trying to stop. Oh, I know you, Uncle. And it's clear your deceptions were the groundwork for a coup against my family. And Markov. I feel like you're pulling you shit out of your ass, though. We have enough to mount a lengthy investigation into your affairs. I place you under arrest for the murder of my mother and father. That feels like a weep. Like, even if it's true, like, there's no evidence here. It's just two rock people fighting each other. What are you doing? The lamb is the criminal, not me. Your Highness, whatever the Baron's crimes, your brother also has much to answer for here. And if I may say, Markovia has suffered enough at the hands of metahumans. No, brother. Grego, please, don't do this. You must leave Markovia. Immediately. Look, even if you're not evil, you're awful. Take care of him, please. Hmm. Oh, take care of him. I know that I'm the reason why he's in danger and, you know, being banished, but, you know, at least I feel bad about it. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Otto. We couldn't find a transplant. And your sister, Anna, her heart just gave out. Your heart condition is a genetic trait in your family, one oh. we would not have discovered without the unfortunate passing of your sister. So is Black Lightning gonna have to tell this kid that he okay. murdered? Be okay. His sister? Oh, it was a copy. Oh. Time to go. It's no Galina Timon. That's a child. You killed the monster. You killed the key. And when you realize that. When you realize that, you'll regret it. Trust me. No life cannot heal. Okay, so she's just like a cleric, right? What? Also, this doctor... Wait, wait. Does she want to fuck the prince? What do we do she now? keeps like gently cradling him a lot. And I thought, oh, shit. Wow. Okay, that just did that where it ends. Okay. So I guess that was my reaction to season three, episode three of Young Justice Imminent Threats. That ended abruptly. God, this show feels like it got a lot of tonal whiplash in season three because I feel like the lighthearted stuff worked in the first seasons because the dark stuff was still like children show dark stuff. And so when they made jokes or had like visually funny aspects to it, the difference wasn't so huge and now it's just like hey dead children but also like we have a PSA at the very beginning where Beast Boy talks about metahuman rights like but it also seems like we have two new members of the team Halo and Prince Brion. Halo is the much more interesting character though out of the two I feel like I mean I think they're both interesting but like Halo has a lot going on at the moment. Um, she is either a dead girl who came back to life or she is a piece of the mother box that's like possessing the body of a dead girl. Either way, freaking crazy. And also she has like a lot of like interesting powers. Like she can create shields and fly and also bring herself back from the dead and also apparently heal people. But she can't bring other people back from the dead. 
just herself. So she's basically a Dungeons and Dragons cleric without the ability to revivify, which is extremely helpful. I think every good adventuring party slash team needs a good healer. But I wonder if like she gets her memories back. Does she have like the memories of like the girl who like died originally? Like is she just a revived amnesiac metahuman? Or is she something else? Like the body died and something else got put in there. That's probably gonna be like the season long like reveal. Kind of like how Blue Beetle was a season long character arc uh, in season two. Prince Brion is fine. I mean, I don't hate the dude. I just think his story so far hasn't been the most interesting, which kind of sucks because the idea of having like forced metahuman powers and having a character like to play out that arc seems very interesting, but I kind of wish they made his powers more horrifying if that makes sense. Like everyone else got to be like weird, mutated, horrible creatures and Prince Brion just has lava rock powers. And they tried to show like the horror of those powers, but it just looked kind of goofy. It was just him screaming and just running straight into the earth. <laughs> which, which was, it was just funny. It wasn't like horrifying, which kind of sucks because I think that was what they were going for. There, I don't know, there was just something about just Troy Baker just screaming into a mic and just like <laughs> having the character just like it feels like you know when people pretend to like be walking down the stairs um, and behind something but they're just kind of like lowering their body that's kind of like what it looked like and so it wasn't really it didn't hit the way it was supposed to I just kind of wish he would have looked like a monster because he has like that more monstrous form when he has like the rocks over him, but it's just rocks over him. But I wish that like that's what he looked like because I think that would be like a more like interesting like character arc and maybe that's like the reason why like he can't stay because he looks like a horrific mo rock monster, but they're cowards and they're like, eh, we're gonna keep him a handsome man. But also why does it feel like the doctor lady is like in love with the dude, which I think is weird because I think he's supposed to be like 16 to 18. I'm gonna go ahead and say 18. Wait, no, because it would have been like whenever they come of age that what's his face was supposed to take the throne. Huh. But she just keeps like stroking his face and like gently cradling him while he's like got his abs out, which just feels like it's supposed to be romantically coded, which would be weird if he was like a teenager or however old he's supposed to be. But seriously, lady, stop cradling him. You're the one who did this to him. I don't even really understand her logic. Like, oh, she hates the creation of metahumans and like what these people are doing. And so what she's going to do is forcibly create a, a metahuman. I still don't know what's going on with the other royal families as well. Cause I'm still like, maybe it's because they acted like the Baron being evil was like this big reveal and I thought that was supposed to be like the most obvious thing known to man. Like they literally spelled it out like, hey, we shouldn't let this guy be on the throne. He's power hungry. And now they're like, shock, this dude who's had all the evil red flags is evil. Like the reveal of a Scooby-Doo villain. That was so obvious. And the rest of the show is like trying to have like nuance and then, and then they have the most evil looking dude be the evil dude. Like he had red herring vibes all over, you know, the ones that are like in horror or like murder mysteries that are so over the top and evil looking and like suspicious that you know they can't be it because that's too obvious. That's the vibe he gave out. And then they played the dun 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 music, like when he appeared. And maybe I'm overthinking this and being like, oh, maybe Gregor actually maybe wasn't part of it but is now using this as a way of getting any people that would possibly challenge him to for the throne out of the way. But then I think, oh, I'm definitely overthinking this. This kid is just spineless and banished his brother to save face. Either way, not the biggest fan, but he's king now, so good for him. There's some just weird royal stuff going on. Speaking of royals, 
apparently Beast Boy is dating Count Vertigo's niece. That's weird. That's an interesting choice. Some of the relationships the show comes up with are like just the weirdest ass poles. They're like, well, we're not gonna introduce the Titans, which of all the characters to introduce, why would you not introduce the Titans? But since we're not introducing the Titans anytime soon, it seems like we can't have like Beast Boy and Raven, which is objectively the best ship for Beast Boy, but whatever. I know that there's some like huge Beast Boy Terra fans, and you know what? I'm not mad at you. You're just wrong. Yeah, this, 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 that was just like a weird throwaway line. I do think it's kind of, I don't know if cute's the right word to say that it's cute to, that they met at Wally West's uh, funeral. Don't know if that's cute, but the fact that she was there for Wally and like they apparently like probably kept in touch after, you know, he saved her life and got the heart transplant and stopped Count Vertigo the first time. I have no idea what the point of these PSAs are. For some odd reason, I think they're gonna compound in like something like Beast Boy's entire character arc is going to be played out in clips from his TV show and news articles and like PSAs and TV interviews and all together. It's just like, <laughs> here's Beast Boy's character arc just through all of his media appearances throughout the year. That would be interesting and kind of weird. And there's just like a bunch of stuff at the beginning that I'm like, there's gotta be so many references and like that short beginning. But it just like passed too quickly for me to actually like understand any of them. I did get the Courtney Whitmore uh, Star Girl reference. That was the most obvious one because it's literally her name. But I guess this was before the Star Girl show, so I guess it wouldn't have been as like obvious or like a well-known, because I feel like any JSA reference are usually ass poles. Like there's like a couple JSA members that I think everyone knows, but they're usually the ones that have transitioned into, you know, like the JLA and other properties. But apparently Stargirl in this is just not a Stargirl. She's like a TV interviewer with a show called Stargirl where she is a girl who in, like interviews stars. Oh, we, weird choice, but okay. Also there was like the Oculus Rift looking headset, uh, but it's good something good. And also the Warner Brothers ripoff uh, logo is also branded the same. So is that a reference? Is that someone's last name that I should know? Probably is. It's probably some, again, ass pull of a character. But if it's not, it's like a uh, actual like big DC character, I'm gonna feel bad and feel like I need to have my comic nerd card revoked. But I saw the name Good. Good? I'm gonna just say it's good. Uh, I saw the name Good like a couple times, so. Either it's just a random ass reference or it's gonna come back in some like weird way. I, d I can't see the headset not coming back. Like there's gonna be some like weird mind control media subplot at some point. Cause you don't just introduce that and like not bring it back. The way that like, oh, the uh, energy drinks that were all throughout season two were actually like turning people like mindless. And maybe this is another version of that. And maybe this good person is like working for the light. Because apparently though, technology has kind of advanced and now a lot of people have like super advanced technology, not just like the way that like the team has like, hollow projectors that you can touch and like portable like projecting TV screens. Now it's like more people have that, like average people. Yeah, the only other references I really get in like the, like, the opening bit uh, is like you can see a Hello Megan and a uh, a uh, G Gordon Godfrey TV logo. <sighs> Why that man still has a show is beyond me. I mean, a lot of people with bad opinions have shows still, but like, ugh. And on the other end of the episode, like literally and tonally, uh, we have the ending, which was 
kind of fucking depressing. Now both siblings are dead. I really thought that Black Lightning was going to have to explain to this kid that he accidentally murdered his sister, but no. A random farmer with a shotgun, because they always have shotguns, just came out of nowhere and just started shooting up the place. You know, as rural farmers do. Like, and I'm not surprised. I've met farmers. They all have shotguns. And I don't really blame him. I'm gonna be honest. Like, if I saw a giant lava monster and I was a farmer and had a shotgun, I'd probably start shooting too. But he did kill a kid. And it was a really abrupt ending where Black Lightning was just like, you killed a kid. You're gonna hate yourself later. And then it just ended. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Just that, uh, hey, look, d there's a dead kid. And I think the reason why they make them look like weird lava monsters is so you don't see a literal dead child in this show. I think despite their uh, heightened rating at this point, I think that might push it a little too far. But that's where we end our first arc, basically. With two new metahumans and a dead child. But that was my reaction to season three, episode three of Young Justice, Imminent Threats. If you like this reaction, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and keeps me motivated to keep making more of these. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.